Hey guys and gals, this is Ed Got Money. Um, today I'm going to cover Split Sleep of Earth, how it works, and how you can use it. So, hours of service. You have eight hours and zero minutes here of remaining bottom, drive time. Here on the bottom right it says Will Pair SB. If you look closely, the little green box is checked. Okay, I can uncheck it, and then I can check it. Okay, Will Pair Sleep. You will violate if you do not follow the split sleep worth. Okay. So now it's hitting. All right. So first we'll cover what's called the pause. The pause. All right. So we're going to look at this. On a regular 14-hour clock, okay, we look at our graph here. So as we're looking at the day, I have my sleeper birth. Then I go into my off-duty. Da, 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 da. Then here I am off-duty from about 1230 to after four because i started my day here on yard move on duty status at about 8 30 you can look at my summary and see that i only have six and a half hours left of my 14 hour clock and that is closed because over the last three and a half hours four hours i have been sitting at a loss waiting to get a tire changed so my whole day is getting run down and if you look at my clock or my gps says i have seven hours and 31 minutes to make it to my delivery and i am now not going to be able to make it to my delivery because my 14 hour clock says i only have six and a half minutes okay however if i go back here hours of service you have six hours and 27 minutes of remaining drive time I understand Click on my wheel pair split sleeper berth. As long as it'll click. There we go. Ooh. Started to scare me there. Okay, now you see my time jumped to eight. Let's go to my summary. I have 14 hours left of my on duty status. 818, which didn't change. Available on my 11 hour. Go back to my graph. Everything's still the same. All right, so why do I have time left available now? Well, the reason is, is because on the split sleep of birth, at any point in time, if I am sitting, any point in time, if I'm sitting more than for two hours in an off-duty status, my 14-hour clock will pause. It'll pause and it'll give me those two hours back. All right, now, if I, once I move again on duty, drive, whatever it is, once I either go back on duty or move, if I get out of that off-duty status, my 14-hour clock will start to tick back down, all right? But it will stay tick, uh, stay paused, and with that time still available, as long as I am in a off-duty status, that's either off-duty, personal conveyance, or sleeper berth, all right? And this can count towards my 10-hour break. The way it counts towards my 10-hour break is I have to pair the split later. However, the small break has to be at least two hours, but cannot be more than three. You can stay in it more than three, and the clock will remain paused, but only three hours will, will be attributed to your 10-hour break. This is where it gets confusing for people. But unless you stay seven hours, which the big break is, is a minimum of seven, in the sleeper berth the entire time, that's, the, that's for the big break. The big break has to all be in a sleeper. That's for you to be able to sleep, obviously. But the off-duty status, the two to three hours there, that can be done in any off-duty status. And if you take that off-duty status, uh, let's say, like for my, mine, for instance, right now I've been in it for over four hours. My clock still stays paused, all right? That only three of those hours can count towards my 10-hour break tonight. Well, what does that mean, Terry? Well, when I get out of this, I'm going to drive the remainder seven and a half hours that I have to do in order to uh, get to the facility. Once I do that, and I let's say that it was seven for easy math. Once I get to the facility, that seven hours, as soon as I hit there, I have to put seven hours in the sleeper berth because only three of this four and a half, five hours I've been sitting here can count towards the break. So I have to put seven in the sleeper berth in order to get any time back. How much time do you get back? Good question. You never gain time. In case anybody ever tries that, you never gain any time. What you do is, is you can pause that clock, and then you'll get back what you didn't use between the two breaks. All right? What that means is 
I'm going to drive for seven hours. We're going to call it seven to make it easy. I'm going to drive for seven hours, okay? And let's say that on that seven hours, I'm going to be on duty for eight or for seven of those same hours. Let's just do that for simple math. All right. When I go into the sleeper berth and pair these two breaks, when I come out, the only time I have available is what I didn't use between the two breaks. So if I drove for seven hours and worked for seven hours, when I come out of that seven hour sleeper berth, I have seven hours on duty available and four hours of drive. That is how much I have available until I pair the next break, which since that'll be a seven in the sleeper, I have to do what? Make a three in any off-duty status. So let's say then I drive the two hours that it takes to get to my next facility. All right, so I drive those two hours and then I go off-duty. All right, I log in my time, on duty, yard, what have you. Let's say I get hung on the door as I'm off-duty taking a nap because I'm gonna need one. All right, now if I sit there for three hours, that pairs again. So if all I did was drive two hours in between those two breaks, and then I paired that three hours right there, that seven and that three together. Now, as soon as I come out of that three, I will have, since I only used two, I'll have 12 hours on duty, and I'll have nine hours available of driving. Now, let's say that I then, at that point, I have to go to my consignee, and my consignee is six hours away, all right? I got plenty of time on my drive line on my 14, so I turn around, let's say I drive it straight, so that's six hours straight there, all right? I drive it, so I've got six hours straight there in between the load and unload and, you know, the load and unload and the pre-trip and everything, I say I use an extra hour, so let's say I use seven hours on duty and six hours of driving, okay? and I had just come out of a seven split, a seven hour sleeper berth, then that means I have to do three hours off duty before I get any time back. And since I drove for seven and worked for eight, I'm only going to get, or I'm sorry, drove for six, worked for seven, I'm gonna get seven, seven minus 14 is seven hours, six minus 11 is five. So I get back what I didn't use between the two breaks, bam, so I get, like I said, if it was seven, I get seven hours there. Seven hours on my 14, five hours on my drive line. Now, can you pair two big breaks? Yes, you can pair a seven with another seven sleeper. The only, it doesn't gain you anything except for the next time in order to get your time back that you didn't use between the two breaks, you have to put in a three in an off-duty status. But in this scenario, because I'll be driving straight to the consignee, I more than likely, you know, I probably will pop two sevens beside each other. Doesn't matter, it'll do the exact same thing. The only thing you have to worry about how much time you get back is you get back the time you didn't use between the two breaks off of a 14 and off of a two. Oh, I'm sorry, 14 and an 11. So for instance, if I leave at 0700 and I drive for two hours, then I go into a small break and let's say that small break was five hours, all right? Only gets to count as three, but at five hours, the clock stays paused. When I come out of that, since I drove for two hours, how many hours of drive time do I get back? Nine. Drove for two, 11 minus two is nine. So when I come out of that three, all right, it, I stay there for five hours, but it only gets to count for three. So when I come out of the small break, and let's say I drive five hours, came out of a small three what do I have to put in the sleeper berth seven so when I drive five hours then I go into the sleeper berth for seven hours when I come out how many hours of driving do I have left six so that was a seven hour sleeper berth so let's say now I go into the next facility and I get in there for an hour and a half well, nothing happens. Clock's still ticking down because I didn't hit that two-hour mark. But let's say I go into the consignee. I get out in an hour and a half, but I don't have to pick up another load for seven hours from now. Well, I'll go off-duty personal conveyance since I already logged my on-duty status and everything when I got there. I'll do off-duty personal conveyance, and I'll go to the nearest truck stop available, nearest legal parking for food and facilities. Then I'll brush my teeth, wash my face, wash my booty, excuse me, get something to eat, and now wait closer to my appropriate time because now after that hour and a half, that when it hits two hours, my clock's paused, right? So now since it's paused, 
having to pair between your sevens and your threes and your eights and your twos, you know, I have to hit that three hour mark in order for my time to come back. But the reason I utilize that at consignee and I'm empty and I'm utilizing my PC, I'm not telling you about how to use your PC, but that is a legal way to use your personal conveyance and you don't have another load to pick up for another six to seven hours. That's where I'll go off duty, go over there and I'll finish out my break. Okay. And using your pause and then if you get out of a consignee utilizing that to go to you know a truck stop under personal advance that's an off-duty status the small break has to be in any off-duty status which is off-duty personal conveyance or sleeper berth all right the large break has got to be all in the sleeper berth now if you sit for two hours somewhere that's two hours when you get there for the sleeper berth the next time for the break you got to have eight so one more time i start at zero seven hundred in the morning i drive till 1200 I drive for five hours. All right. I get stuck. Let's say I don't even get stuck. Let's say I wanted to bypass traffic. I wanted to eat something, whatever. I can go off duty for two hours and my clock will pause and give me those two hours back on my 14. I work. I drove for five. When I come out of that two hour break, okay, I have six available because I drove for five. So then I can drive for six. Let's say that I, I'm maxing out my clock for whatever reason. So I drive for six, then I have to go in the sleeper berth for eight hours because I did a two-hour pause earlier. So to pair it, I go in the sleeper berth for eight hours. When I come out of that sleeper berth after eight hours, then I will have, since I drove for six, I will have five hours available. Okay? Now, let's say I decided I wanted to stay in it for ten. You know, I didn't have to make my next appointment. Wasn't, you know, I had plenty of time on the load. If I just do 10, then even though I got the pause earlier in the day, it's no problem. I get back a full 14, fresh clock, good to start my day. It's about as clear as mud, and I understand. The places I use it at is, is like the situation here. I needed to get a new tire. Um, had a bad shock. I log my on-duty time for the repair, and then I'm sitting there for four or five hours not doing anything that's an off-duty status so i'm off duty for that amount of time my clock pauses gives me the availability to still make my run uh, the rest of the time if i'm on sometimes i get hung at a door last night i got hung up for like 14 hours you know got there logged on duty you know uh load unload at the consignee uh, clocked in everything. They told me, oh, the broker got it wrong. Your appointment's the following morning. Uh, ever run into that? Well, if your appointment is less than 10 hours from now, you have a problem if you're using your 14-hour clock. But if you PC then, even under the load, which is legal, PC to food and facilities, cannot legally park it at the consignee. Once you finish your off-duty, you know, that night you go to sleep, go ahead and get your rack out. You can return to origin the next morning on PC. You're not advancing the load. You already drove the load there. So you can return to origin and then sit on their site for the remainder of the next hour or so, whatever you got to do in order to reach your tent. That's called maximizing your clock. Uh, yeah. That's about as, it's as simple but as difficult for people. But it's, you know, small break, big break got to pair the two together you can put two big breaks together cannot put two small breaks together okay and then um big break all has to be in the sleep berth small break can be in any off-duty status small break has to be a minimum of two hours and only can maximum count for three however you can stay in that paused status for as long as all the way till it runs into your tent and it gives you full time back um and the big break has to be a minimum of seven hours. All has to be in the sleep of birth. And, you know, you can't pair a one and a half to eight and a half because it doesn't clock, pause clock. It's two hours. got to be paired with an eight. Two and a half can be paired with seven and a half. And then all the way up to three. Okay. Let's, let's see how that goes. Good luck. Make money. Make more than Ed got money.